everybody and welcome back to my channel uh, we're now on to I think part five of our cat and today we're gonna get definitely gonna get the nose and muzzle drawn in we'll see if we can get the rest of the face drawn in um, we'll just see how we go um, so yeah let's get started everything you need as usual is linked below any questions let me know so the nose is a very very pale pink um, and we're gonna slowly build this up just gonna take my putty eraser and lift some of this graphite okay so i'm going to first off start with the put mortem and we're going to map in the darker shapes so this is running along the nostril and inside those nostrils The why my pencil gets all crumbly when it's first sharpened. <laughs> Bit annoying. <laughs> so I'm just following the shapes of this darker nostril area. Using light pressure, I'm not pressing hard, I'm just gently mapping in <laughs> the shape of that first nostril. And I'll do it the same here. Now when you're drawing your animals, you want to make sure that the tips of these nostrils line up. So the top of these nostrils, if I hold a pencil, I don't know if you can see maybe the shadow. That shadow lines up to both nostrils, so that shows that these are in line. And you want that on uh, when you're drawing a cat, a dog, they all line up. And then over the top of that, I'm going in with that red violet. And I'm using the red violet over that kaput mortem. And we're just going to blend it, very light pressure, slightly downwards. And do the same on this side. Again, blend it ever so slightly downwards. Okay. Then I'm going to take my beige red with a nice sharp pencil. I'm using circular motions, light pressure, just to apply this as a base layer. So I'm not going in too dark or too heavy. You want to be able to see the grain of the paper as you're applying this. So if you can't see that grain, you're pressing too hard. I'm doing this very, very lightly. And I'm doing this across all of this nose now. Circular motions. So we get a smooth and even layer across all of this nose. Okay, I've now got the pink Madder Lake. And I'm just going to bring in that pink filtrum. So the line up the nose, the filtrum. Bring that in with light pressure. I'm not pressing hard, just bringing that in. And then I'm just going to, again, light pressure, bring this pink outwards and then if you are struggling with pressure remember to hold your pencil higher up so that you can't press too hard and just build up that little bit of pink up this line there's also a little hint of the pink on the side of the nose here and along this edge, so curving my lines because it's curving round. So we're always remembering the shapes that is going on with your nose. And again here. And there's a little bit of pink along this edge and in the middle of this nose here. So it's very light pressure. We're just very lightly building up this pink tone. Okay, and then I'm going to take my Venetian red and we're going to just bring this Venetian red in along this edge and again light pressure you can see I'm not pressing hard you can still see the grain of the paper that's completely fine okay now this side of the nose is a lot pinker so we're going to come in with a middle purple pink again light pressure 
just follow in that direction. I'm actually just going to use it at the bottom of this nose as well. Just so we've got a nice pink nose. Remember, we don't need it to be the exact same as our reference photo. And then I'm just going to take my sanguine, bring it out from that red violet area and over that light pink violet. And that'll give you that orange tone that you can see. Um, back to the Venetian red. So this side isn't as orange. So I'm just going to do another layer of the Venetian red. And then I'm going to get my cinnamon. And I'm going to go over this side with the cinnamon. And again, you can see we're not pressing hard. We're just slowly building up the layers. And bring that cinnamon down over these pink tones. A little mark in here with the cinnamon. Okay, so we can start darkening this up again. So just go back to your Caput Morton. I'm just going to darken that nostril area. Now this cat has a very smooth nose, so we're trying to get that effect of the smoothness. And then I'm going back to the red violet. We really want this nostril area to be dark. And blend it downwards. And then I'm going to go back to my cinnamon for this side, over the top. And my sanguine for the opposite side to bring in that orange tone. Back to the beige red. And a very light layer across all of the nose. The mid purple pink, uh, not pink, no, the pink madder lake, sorry. where we added it before and then going to take our white and we're going to apply the white across all of the nose apart from the nostril area so don't go over those nostril areas so the darkest parts of the nostril areas and I'm using harder pressure and this is just going to really smooth out that nose and blend these colours nicely together. And then I'm just going to get that um, light purple pink. Just bring in that pink nose line again. Blend it outwards. And I'm going to use edge line. I'm just going to use a bit of light pressure. Just to bring in a touch of pink on the top of this nose. With this, with this pencil. Take my cinnamon. Just gonna blend this outwards. And then that white. And there we go, we have a, a really cute pink nose. It's not taking us long at all. So we're gonna move on to the fur now and we are going to be doing the fur around the nose. Uh, this is quite a light area and we're going to make sure we keep it quite light. So we're going to start off first. Um, I'm just trying to work out which side is best. I think we'll do the colder side first. So we want our cold grey one. Oops. As our base layer. And we really need to be aware of the direction of the fur at this point. So as you're building up this base layer, let me sharpen my, um, sorry, I'm getting my sharpener, sharpen my cold grey. So as you're building up this part of your uh, kitten's nose, you really want to make sure that we are following this fur direction. And the fur on this nose is going to change direction so many times. So it's going to be a challenge for you all to make sure that you're constantly looking for that reference photo. Light pressure again, we're not pressing hard, we want this to be quite subtle. All the colours we've used have been quite subtle, 
and we're going to bring a lot of pinks in um, above this nose. Okay, so I'm just going to make sure that I'm bringing this up and over this bridge of the nose. And then as we come to here, we've got fur going in this direction. And we will not make these strands of fur more noticeable to indicate that fur change. But it's just so that we're aware of what is happening. And like I said, we're using very light pressure at the moment. And then I'm just going to use the white over the top very lightly, not pressing hard. I don't want to press hard. Okay, I then want the um, coal grey two. And um, with the cold grey too, we're going to make these fur marks a bit more noticeable. So where we can see that change in fur direction, where you've got a clump of fur basically, because of the change of direction, just marking that in. And I'm going to bring this down once here. Okay, and then I'm going to take my beige red along this edge so it's coming out of that nose and it's curving round here and then back to the cold grey one we can go over all that again following the fur direction remember your pencil strokes are creating that effect of fur Back to the cold grey two. Okay, the um, cold grey one. Very gently with the cold grey one. Up this nose. Um, and then the warm grey one, blending into that cold grey one, and again following that fur direction. Light pressure, you don't need to press hard. You can see just how subtle we've made this fur look. I feel like we need to add a little bit of detail in that corner of the eye as well. Okay, back to the cold grey one. to blend those colours together ni nicely and then we're taking the beige red and this beige red is coming up the, from the nose light pressure again don't need to press hard following that direction And I'm going to use this beige red in the corner of this Kieran's eye here, building up some details. And again, on this side of Kieran's eye, building that fur detail. And I'm going to take the white and just go over this middle section. And even with this white pencil as I'm burnishing, so burnishing is when we're pressing pen the white pencil over all these layers, I'm making sure it's going in the same direction that this fur is going in. Like so, beige red again, just from this nose, I want it to look seamless, that this nose is just blending into that fur. Okay, that looks better. 
Right, I think we're going to do uh, this side of the face first and we're just going to work our way from left to right. Obviously I'm right handed so I work left to right. Um, if you are left handed, as you are coming across the page, um, use your piece of paper to make sure you rest on. Um, but yeah, we'll just work our way across and we'll just see how far we get on this tutorial. So, first of all, we're going to map in some of these white whiskers with our white pencil and we're going to do like we've done before, really hard pressure to create that build up of the wax uh, to get that resist. So I'm just lifting the graphite and lightening some of this graphite, okay? And then I've got my polychromos white. Um, let me move the drawing up ever so slightly so you can see what we're doing. And we've got, right, we've got that one line there. So we've got the whisker coming down here. So all you're doing is have a look at your reference photo and just draw in. Remember, you're pressing hard. And you just want to draw in any of the whiskers that you want to be saved. And showing see I've messed that line up a little bit so I'll have to use a harder pressure there and when I say I've messed up here what I've done is my pencil wasn't sharp enough I've just sharpened it so I've got a really flat line here uh, which is why I always say use sharp pencils okay and then I'm going to bring in some of these other whiskers again really hard pressure and they don't need to be exact to the reference photo. They're going to move about. But I'm just mapping in a few. A few whiskers. Okay, so I've map mapped in some clumps of the whiskers. So we're going to start with the cheek, which is underneath, obviously, the muzzle. So we'll get the cheek drawn in first and go from there. So I'm going to start with my cold grey wool and I am going to use sort of medium pressure now as a build up the base layer underneath or what's going to be underneath the muzzle area. I'm also just going to get my Tombow and just make sure that this graphite is lifted because I don't want any pencil marks showing through. I'm going to put your razor. I'm trying to pick up those little eraser edges. There we go. Okay, so the cold grey one all the way up to the edge of that face. And you're going to draw in some of those wispy lines. And I'm going to be bringing this base layer kind of up to here. Okay, and then over the top of that I'm going in with my white. Now I'm going to make sure I don't go over the whiskers. Just want to use this white over that cold grey one area. Okay, and then I'm just going to bring this cold grey one up this face a little bit more and bring in some of the loose hairs on the side of the face because I don't really have them. And then again with the white, just to soften those edges down. Okay, so back to the cold grey one and I'm just going to make sure that I have a really sharp point as I come in between these whiskers because I need to make sure I've got a nice thin line and thin whiskers and I have a feeling my lines might be a little dark but it's okay 
and then again on this side we've got the whisker and those loose hairs bringing that all the way up to about here and again with the white so this side of the face is quite just cold grey one in colour. We are going to use the cold grey too to bring some details in in a minute. Just want to get the general shaping of this side that's underneath that muzzle. Okay, I'm going round all those whiskers. Making sure that I'm using the sharpest point of the pencil. And then going over the cold grey one with my white. Cold grey one here. Okay. Right. I'm then going to take my cold grey two. I just need to sharpen this. You want a nice sharp point. And the reason you want a sharp pencil is when it comes to doing the details, it's going to be easier. And I'm just going to bring in some little fur details. And you want to make sure you're leaving gaps as you're adding in these details. So you're doing one line and a gap. Oops. And that's just going to create those clumps of fur. And as you build up this cold grey two area, you can see, you're starting to really see those whiskers now. And again, I'm following the fur direction. I know this whisker's a little bit thick here, so I'm just going to make sure. It looks a little thinner now. Bring this detail down. Even though it's white fur, don't be afraid to really use your greys. And it may just be a case of as you're using your greys, you're using light pressure. And just subtly building up the colours. And then I'm going over all of this again with the white. But that light pressure and those subtle colours just really build up the look of white fur and you've got this now white fur on white paper plus white whiskers within the white fur so really feel proud of yourselves as you're drawing this piece got the one grey one I'm just going to bring this in here because it's not an easy subject to draw doing white fur isn't easy um i've got the sky blue again we're just going to bring some of that blue in on that side of that face again. And then again, that white, push it back. Okay, so there's a little side of the face. We may end up having to darken here once we've brought in this muzzle area. But um, we'll see. So that's exactly the area that we're moving on to next is the muzzle. So again, I'm just going to lift some of this graphite. Because we're working with such a light area. Don't want that graphite showing. Um, and I'm just wondering whether we get this bit of fur mapped in first. Yeah, let's do that. So I'm going to take the cinnamon first. So I'm just going to lighten this mouth. Okay, so I've got the cinnamon. I'm just going to bring that cinnamon down. And I'm using the cinnamon to follow the shape of this mouth. Very lightly, not pressing hard. And just by doing this, we're going to get that shape of the mouth mapped in. Um, and then going for the uh, light purple pink again, because it's quite a bright pink in here.
and then lightly blend that outwards into the light flesh. And then I'm going to take the uh, warm grey one over this area. Now I know I'll have to darken this up, but I just want the resemblance of this mouth being there. I feel like that bit's a bit too... Take the um, light purple pink. Mine's a bit not there. Just not as um, symmetrical, a bit lopsided. That's better. Okay, so I'm going to start off once again with the Cold Grey One, very, very light pressure. You want to be barely touching the paper. You want to be tickling the paper with your Cold Grey. Cold Grey One. Again, following that fur direction. We're not pressing really hard and building up a big block of colour. Pressing lightly and building up the fur. And again, I'm following that fur direction. We really want to get this rounded look at this muzzle area. Okay, right, I'm then going to take my... Oops, that wasn't the colour I wanted. <laughs> Warm, well, that's not the colour I want either. Well, warm grey one is the colour that I want, and I'm picking every colour up but that. Um, warm grey one along this bottom edge. And I'm using the warm grey one to follow these little um, lines where like the whisker hairs are. And I'm just using light pressure to build it up. And in this corner it's quite warm in tone. Okay, and then I'm going to go over that with a white. And I've got the cold grey too. And I'm just going to build up some detail where I can see it with the cold grey too. So you can see how having a sharp pencil, I'm not pressing hard, but I'm getting some really fine detail now within this fur she's really starting to look quite cute <laughs> and again along here so anywhere we can see that blue tone that cold hue to the piece is where we're adding the cold grey to just feel like this cheek needs to be a bit round and it needs to come up here a little bit more okay yeah, that looks better. Right, uh, I need the warm grey too next. And I'm just going to do the same, but in these warm areas. Again, we're making sure we're going round those whiskers, because those whiskers are in front of what we're drawing in at the moment. And by drawing in between them, we're really giving you that impression that those whiskers are overhanging and in front of these areas that we're just drawing in right now. And again, taper strokes, so reduce your pressure as you are lifting your pencil away and off the paper. I'm then going to take the beige red because we've got a nice pinkish tone. Over in 
me see that area. Right up to that line. And then the mid, uh, the pink madder lake. Very light pressure. We don't want this to be very dark and in your face, but we want it to just be a hint along there. And then again, the white. Now I've used circular motions just along that pink bit so it looks nice and smooth and then my pencil strokes will look like the fur again. Then we're back to the cold grey too. And then the cold grey one. Just to help blend. Okay, the cinnamon, I just want to make it look like this nose is part of the face. So we're just going to bring some little fur strokes from that nose into there. And then I'm also going to use this cinnamon to highlight some of these little whisker marks that I can see. Might have been better actually with like the copper. Um, but this will do for now. Um, actually, no. I'm going to take my uh, my gold. Um, I'm going to use that gold. Go over those lines with your cinnamon. And then I'm just going to bring a little bit of definition. Yeah, that's better. I'm going to use that gold here as well. Okay, back to the beige red. Just want to bring in a little bit more of that pinkiness. And then the white again and making sure you go over that gold to knock back any metallic sheen. You don't want it to look shiny. Okay, and there's one side of that muzzle. Um, I do want to darken um, underneath, so going back to the cold grey too. And I'm just going to darken and make sure that I'm tapering out so it's darker underneath this muzzle, but it's lighter coming towards the edge. I'm going to just go over that as well with my warm grey too. Okay, that looks a lot better. Right, let's get on to the um, other side of the uh, muzzle here. Now, we do have a bit of a bluish tone on this side before it gets into that warmer colour, so... Once again, I just need to lift some of the graphite. I'm going to use the cold grey one as a very light, as a very light base layer. Um, I just need to sharpen it. I'm going to have to get a new pencil. And again, as I'm drawing this out, I'm following the shape. Uh, following the direction of the fur, sorry. I know I went quiet then, I was just concentrating. <laughs> and it's coming up the side of this nose here. And you can see it's very light pressure. We can build up the colour. Oh no, not there. I 
Okay, so I've got the um, cold grey one following the shape of this little muzzle cheek. Um, I'm sure there's a proper name for it. <laughs> um, and then I need my white again. So we're just following the same steps as before. It's just on the opposite side. This is why I kind of want to do a tutorial where I do one, maybe I do one half and then see everybody's results doing the opposite side of a face. Right, we then want to take our beige red. Especially. Oh, I've not drawn in whiskers. Oh, bugger, bugger, bugger. Right. <laughs> Before I go any further, I need my whiskers drawing in, don't I? The fact that I forgot my whiskers. So, it's only because I've just realised that I wasn't getting any resist. So I'm just going to lift some graphite. Right, hopefully <laughs> you will have done your whiskers. Don't worry if you haven't like me. Um, we can do them now. Sharp white pencil. And I'm just going to draw in some whiskers. I need to lift this graphite. Coming across the side of the face here. And then we've got one coming. In here. Okay. Uh, and then we do have uh and we've got some little ones. I think I'm gonna have mine curved down here just to give it a little bit of interest. So you don't need to follow the whiskers exact for the reference. Remember, you're making this an original and I'm adding some character and some whiskers doing little different things. Right, <laughs> now we can go back to the beige red in this corner. And then the pink meadow lake. Very light pressure again, remember. Okay. Um, and then over the top of that, I'm going to take the one way one. Oops, this pencil lead's breaking on me. It's happening a lot recently. I don't know what's going on. Okay, and then um, actually, I'm going to take my one grey two. Just build up some of the warmth on this side of the face. And then the cold grey too. Some details. It's a very, very cute kid on Okay, I need to bring this beige red further up here. And keep going with that cold grey too, a little bit of detail. Um, and then I'm going to take the cinnamon. Just run it on all these edges again. Okay, and then the gold to mop in. Those whiskers. And again, I'm just going to bring in some little fur lines from that nose. And then I'll go over all that with the white. So this side isn't as detailed as here. Not taking as long. Okay, I do need a bit more detail though. So I'm just going to pick up my uh, one grey one. A runny nose, is that why? Just 
building up around here and then I'll get the cold grey one over the top and making sure I'm following the third direction all the time right let's do um the little chin um so I'm gonna come in again put a raise just lift some of this up and across all of this I'm gonna come in with the cold grey one and the fur is just going so straight down it's curving round here a little bit so going straight down So I hope you've enjoyed doing this one because obviously it's not a dog. We've done a lot of dogs. I say a lot of dogs. I think we've done four. Is it four now? So it's nice to do a kitten. Um, and you guys did vote on this one. Um, we're going to do some wildlife pieces. I have been asked to do a white dog. So at some point... Um, we will do another dog, but I'd like to do some more wildlife pieces, do something a little different for you all. Right, so we've got a base layer now of the cold grey one. Then I'm going to take the cold, uh, the warm grey one. I'm just going to resharpen this. Okay, so with the warm grey one again, following third direction and I do need to darken under that mouth area here You see, I'm not pressing hard, we're just slowly building up the layers of colour. Okay, and then going in with a warm grey 2. I think the warm grey 2 is going to be better. So sometimes you could go straight in, we could have gone straight in with the cold grey 2, but because I wasn't sure if it was going to be too dark, I just build it up slowly with a warm grey 1. So if you're ever unsure, just build it with a lighter colour, and then if you think, yeah, okay, a dark colour will be fine you'll be okay you're building up your confidence that way there's a little marking on the chin here so i'm just going to map that in with a one grade two okay i'm going to take my cinnamon and i'm just going to start mapping in this darker pinkish fur and the beige red coming over that cinnamon and again lightening just making it seamlessly blend here right i'm just going to get my red violet yeah that's better right that was better um i want my nugget got some little darker brown fur so this is just little details now that I'm coming in with with a nugget on this chin. And that little marking on the chin as well. Use the nugget there. Okay, so I can then go back to my um warm grey two. This down uh, and go over the top of that with a cold grey two. Cold grey one. Just gonna get to that cold grey two again under here. 
Then make sure that it looks like that, that cheek is above this fur. And then that can just blend into this little chin and then the white. Okay, we need to darken that line up again. So I'm going back in with this cinnamon. Just to emphasise these little cheek lines, I guess. <laughs> Lip lines. like so okay and i'm just going to bring the cinnamon i feel like i just want to bring that pink down a little bit and um, i'm going to take the pink model lake but very very gently just want to bring this pink a little further down and then i'm just going to take the warm gray one as well sage red again so i'm just slowly building up these layers till i'm happy with the color that i've achieved and i'm getting there just want a little bit more cinnamon on this lip and then i'll take the white just need to darken up that nugget marking again here so i'm just going back in with that nugget Again, just darkening up some of the little markings on this chin. And there we go, we have a really cute little chin. Right, let's get this side of the face finished and then we can um, finish this part of the tutorial with a full face. So we're going to um, go in with uh, this time our warm grey one and I'm just gonna bring it along the bottom of this muzzle yep. so I'm just following that shape with the warm grey one and it's curving up to where we've got the marking going on um, so here in this little area I've got the cold grey one so again just following that fur direction coming in here as well with the cold grey one okay um and then the white it just helps you burnish and blend a little bit right so uh the cold grey two And then the cold grey too is just adding in some little fur details. You can blend that out with a warm, uh, with a white. I'm just going to take my um, beige red as well along this eyelid. Okay. That looks better. Right, so um, I'm going to also take the cold grey one as the base layer along the bottom here and we're going to use the warm grey one to act as the shadow. So just sharpen this.
go and add in those little flyaway hairs at the side of the head. So I'm trying to just work out the direction of the fur and then as I'm doing this I'm looking at the reference photo um, for the fur direction but also I'm trying to think ahead like where do I want this warm grey? What Do I want the cold grey to just stay on its own and just build up the layer of cold grey? So as you're adding a base layer like, and you're looking back at your reference photo you can be planning or trying to plan ahead right so we've got the base layer of the cold grey one um going to the warm grey one now this side i know is warm so we're just going to bring that warm grey one over and down here so that it all blends together nicely and that curve of the face comes down here as well with that warm grey one So hopefully you can see how that all just blends in. I'm just going to take my nugget and just create some little darker lines so that we've got those white furs coming over the top there. Okay. Um, the one grey two, very lightly. I'm creating that detail. And then the beige red again very light pressure Duh, she does have a pinkish tone along here and then i'm just going to use that white on the side that we've just done burnish that all together warm gray uh, cold gray two just bring in a little bit of detail there okay right so under the um muzzle here so I'm going back to my warm grey one, under here, and I'm just bringing it underneath that muzzle. Hopefully you can see how that's just blending nicely. And then you can go in again with your cold grey one. And I can see that I need to bring that beige red further down here. So I'm just going to use circular motions, light pressure. And then I can go in with the white because I've brought that pink a little bit further down. And again, following the fur direction to blend. And it does need to go a little darker for me, um, for my picture. So I'm just using cold grey too. underneath here like so right um, and then my one grey two back to the one grey one and again I'm just going to go over all of that with the white. Like so. And I think we may have a cute little cat's head. So I've just moved it down a little bit because I've noticed I want a little bit more detail here. So I'm going in with a cold grey too. And I'm just darkening up that shadow here. And then I'm just going to take my cold grey one and just recreate some of these stray hairs on the top of the head. We also need to draw in... Oops, you can't see that. 
We all, um, also need to join these whiskers. Um, because they're still graphite, so we'll get them drawn in, and we're just going to use the cold grey one for them. So you're definitely going to need a nice sharp pencil. <laughs> um, I'm just going to take my white over the top of this little fuzzy head, so that it all seamlessly blends, and it kind of softens those lines down. It doesn't give it a sharp an edge, um, which we don't want. So, nice sharp cold grey one, and we're going to map in these whiskers. So I'm going to make sure that that graphite is lifted. And then I'm going to take my cold grey one. Oops, it's a bit dark at the bottom here. Really want to make sure that that graphite has been lifted. And I'm just going to taper off, so lift your pencil off. As you come... Down here, it just wants to be a little longer. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that white, just clean the edge a little bit. It's a bit mucky. And I'm just going over the top of that whisker with a white because it's just going to soften it and give it that blurred edge look. And we're just going to do the same for all of these whiskers on here. So remove that graphite. And then lift off. So this is all cold grey one, and then just going in with the white over the top. Cold grey one. The white. And again, just here. And this is the cold grey one. And right even, just get my putty eraser over the top and just ever so gently lift some of that. And that'll just help lighten them up a little bit. Okay, but there we have the whiskers added. So just a little area that I've noticed that I need to just pay attention to here. So this is the cold grey too, and I'm just, again, little details, because I want to say that this face is done. And then all we have to do is the body. That looks better. Just uh, one grey two on this side of the muzzle. And then I'm just going to go back in again with that white. And a bit of the warm grey one here. Red. And I think we can leave our kitten's face here. So let me zoom you out. So there you go, there is our little kitten's face. She now has a full face. Um, and yeah, I'm really happy with how she's turning out so far. She's really cute. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial so far. Um, the next part we're going to start building on um, her body and those feet and legs that we can see. Um, any questions, let me know. Don't forget to subscribe if you aren't already. I do monthly tutorials and I will see you all in the next one. Bye everybody.